the YouTube Quinn Way coming to you with that instant analysis on the Denver Nuggets stealing the game from the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors literally blew this game in the fourth quarter, allowing the Denver Nuggets to get back in this game and having the opportunity to win the game in overtime. Obviously, the layup by Westbrook and the layup by Jamal Murray was what got them back into the game and was able to tie the game to be able to win the game. Jokic was really good down the stretch too, making threes, finishing in the paint. Scotty Barnes and these guys, Davion Mitchell hit a big three to give them one last run possibility to get the win. Just didn't materialize into much. But let's talk about the Denver Nuggets. They started this game underneath the game with a they started off losing this game, I should say, 30 to 29 in the first quarter. And then in the second quarter, the Raptors beat them 32 to 25. And in the third quarter, that's when they started to mount the comeback 29 to 26. And in the fourth quarter, Denver also put up 31 to 26 2. And then they was able to finish off the Raptors in overtime 13 to 11 for a 127 125 game in favor of the Nuggets who get their first win of the season which was much needed because they barely struggled to win they barely they were just barely winning this game and they struggled to win this game but they ended up taking the naiveness of the Raptors to their advantage to find a way to get this win and this is a much needed one because you don't want to start 0-3 because you already started 0-2 and it's good to be able to steal one. These are the games that the Nuggets are going to have to win if they want to be a top six team in the Western Conference based off how they're constructed. They still didn't really get much from their bench, and it don't seem like they're going to really get it that much as the season continues to go. So Jokic is going to have to have these superstar performances to be able to <laughs> even compete with any team. But Aaron Gordon, 16 points, plus 11, plus minus. He did have two personal fouls and five turnovers. He did get one block, two steals, eight assists, and 11 rebounds. Six of those, well, I would say five of those are offensive. Six of eight from the free throw line, two of two from the three-point line, four of eight from the field. Michael Porter Jr., six of 12 from the field, one of four from three, or one from the free throw line, nine rebounds. Two of them was offensive out of that. Two assists, one block, one steal, three personal fouls, plus negative 10 and plus minus 13 points. He made the threes when it mattered, even though he only made one. Um, he was able to do other things offensively tonight, that which is what they needed him to do. He just don't need to be a three-point sniper, and that's it. We need you to rebound. We need you to make shots. We need you to get out in transition. And Michael Porter Jr. was able to do that tonight. Um, Jokic, 18 to 27, three or five from the three-point line. Uh, one or two from the free throw line. He did have 10 rebounds. Three of them was offensive. Four assists, one steal, two blocks, three turnovers, two personal fouls, plus nine and plus minus 40 points. And I will cap that because that's the highest in this entire game when it comes to points. Um, he, he was dominant. He's unguardable, unstoppable. He was very patient when he was attacking and trying to get to his moves and get to his bag. And he was still scoring, and he did it efficiently tonight like he usually does. And he didn't shoot a lot of threes. Five is a lot for Jokic, but he was able to make down three of those. And he had the ability to pass, but he didn't get over a pass happy. He just looked at a lot of shots was there, and he just took the ones that he felt comfortable taking, and, or he worked his way into them. And Jokic still looks like the best player in the league like he did last year, just a different version of him that's not really getting the teammates involved as much, but setting screens to help get those guys open. And if they're open, they, he's going to deliver the pass to him, or Murray's going to deliver the pass to him. If not, Jokic, I'm just going to take it upon myself to score and make as many shots as I can. But Jamal Murray was had 17 points, plus eight and plus minus two personal fouls, one steal, seven assists. He did have nine rebounds, and one of was offensive. 5 of 5 from the free throw line, 0 of 2 from 3, or 6 of 20 from the field. This was a, a very bad game from Jamal Murray offensively, but at least he found other ways to make a difference on this game, which was important. Bron was 6 of 11 from the field, 1 of 4 from 3. He had 4 of 4 from the free throw line. He had 4 rebounds, 2 
of them was offensive, two assists, one steal, one block, one turnover, three personal fouls, plus eight plus minus 17 points. This is as good as a game you're probably going to get from him, you know, but he played 40 minutes, so you should get a performance like this. Um, Sarge, 0 of 3 from the field, uh, one rebound, one assist, two turnovers, negative nine, plus minus zero points. Watson, 1 of 5 from the field, 4 of 4 from the free throw line, two rebounds, one of them was offensive, two assists. One block, one turnover, one personal foul, negative seven, and plus minus six points. Russell Westbrook played 18 minutes. He was three or seven from the field, or one from three, three or four from the free throw line. He had four rebounds. One of them was offensive, three assists, one steal, two turnovers, four personal fouls, negative one, and plus minus nine points. And Strother had nine points too, but he was three or three from the field, two or two from the three point line, one or two from the free throw line. He had two rebounds. That turned he had one turnover, three personal foul, plus one and plus minus. Everybody else didn't play coach's decision. Forty seven of ninety six, forty nine percent from the field, nine of twenty, forty five percent from three, and twenty four of thirty, eighty percent from the free throw line. They had fifty two rebounds as a team, twenty nine assists, six steals, six blocks, sixteen turnovers, and twenty personal fouls. And in the Raptors, the team that blew it tonight. They had them. Shut, they had the lead going into the fourth quarter, and they also had a huge chance of winning this game because they were leading down the stretch for the most part. It was just the last three minutes that ended up helping them cough away the lead and ultimately the victory. Scotty Barnes was huge, twenty-one points, negative two and plus minus one personal foul, four turnovers, one block, five steals, nine assists. 12 rebounds, two of them was offensive, two of four from the free throw line, one of three from the three-point line, nine of 19 from the field. Um, Yaka Pertle was seven of 13 from the field, two of two from the free throw line. He grabbed a game-high 19 rebounds, and eight of those was offensive. Two assists, one block, three turnovers, two personal fouls, negative one plus minus 16, so a double-double for him. Mitchell had 16 points, three personal fouls, four turnovers, one block. Six assists, two rebounds, one of those offensive, three or four from the free throw line, three or six from the three-point line, five or ten from the field. R.J. Barrett, 20 points, negative three and plus minus. He did have five personal fouls, which was huge and a, a detriment to the Toronto Raptors when he did commit a lot of those fouls and was able to miss a significant time. Two turnovers, three assists, five rebounds. Uh, one of them was offensive, two of six from the three-point line, nine of 21 from the field. He only played 29 minutes tonight. Um, Grady Dick, five of 13 from the field, two of seven from three, three of three from the free throw line, one rebound, four assists, one block, two personal fouls, negative four, and plus minus 15 points. Chris Boucher, four points, plus three, and plus minus two personal fouls, one block. Three rebounds, one of those offensive, 0 of two from the three-point line, two of five from the field. Battle was one of three from the field. He had 0 of two from the three-point line, two of two from the free throw line. One rebound, one block, three personal fouls, plus three and plus minus four points. Magbo was 14 minutes, one of two from the field, one oh one one from the three-point line, four of four from the free throw line. He also had three rebounds, one assist, one turnover, two personal fouls, plus two and plus minus six points. Abaji. Six of 12 from the field, two of five from three, one of two from the free throw line. He had seven rebounds, four, uh, three of them was offensive, one steal, one block, four personal fouls, negative five and plus minus 15 points. Was the best player for them off the bench and was able to give them very good minutes. Um, shed 18 points, four of eight from the field, or two from the three point line, five rebounds, one, I mean, five assists, one rebound. One steal, one turnover, three personal fouls, eight points, and Carlton, 0 of 2 from the field, zeros across the board, negative 3 and plus minus. The rest of the guys did not play coach's decision. Uh, 49 of 109, 49 of 49, 45% from the field, 10 of 35, 28% from three, 17 of 21, 81% from the free throw line, Not obviously not shooting well from three hurt at them a lot and they did have 54 rebounds they did have 30 assists seven steals seven blocks they did have 15 turnovers and 27 personal fouls which was way too many and that also helped them lose this game too tonight but the raptors 
they're going to be a team that's still learning, still growing, and trying to figure out how to win. And obviously, if you look at the Nuggets, they're more poised. They're more knowing what to expect and knowing how to handle themselves and not panic, not overdo things, not force things. And they understand how to execute. They understand how to get quality shots. They understand how to take shots within the offense, even down the stretch, even in a game that you could potentially lose. And you just see the patience and the high IQ of the Denver Nuggets down the stretch, just making good plays and making good decisions and taking care of the ball and not fouling and just playing smart and playing until the end. They could have packed it up. They could have just got lazy. They could have got comfortable. They could have just accepted defeat. But the fact that they came down and kept moving and kept pushing the ball and kept making the right decision and guys kept trying to find ways to get open was one of the biggest reasons why Denver was able to pull the upset and get this victory that they should have been able to get without <laughs> so much chaos and havoc, you know, in getting it. But they a win is a win. You will take it. You will learn from it. You will grow from it. And these are the games that the Denver Nuggets are going to have to win against teams like this if they want to be one of the best teams coming to the playoffs. And Denver just look more hurtable. They look more vulnerable. They just look more easier to figure out and easier to compete with compared to previous years because they did lose so much talent over the last two years. And you can see it. It's obvious this is not the same team. They're no longer intimidating. They're no longer a team that you have to guard for 48 minutes by paying attention and you can't leave nobody open. Sometimes these guys be open. They, they miss so many open and easy opportunities and you still can get transition off of that. So it just shows you that this is a different Denver team. We should lower our expectations for this team because they're just not the same. They're not the juggernaut that they was two years ago or even last year. They're just not. But they're still going to be one of the best teams in the league because they have Jokic. He's going to be their ride or die. If Jokic gets injured, this team is done. If he doesn't get injured, the team can compete with basically anybody. It's just going to be a struggle to consistently score and consistently to defend, which may be why they record might not be that great this year and why – some people may not consider them a championship contender anymore. And if they feel that way, I would say I would agree. You know, just like saying, is the Bucks a championship team or not? Well, they got Giannis. They got a shot just because of that. But it, it, that's the main reason. <laughs> and if you take away that reason, you ain't going to really talk yourself into anything without bringing that up first. So at least you give them their respect. At least you give them their credit because it's due. And we all give them that. But as a championship contender, I just don't see the Nuggets being that anymore because of the subtractions they consistently been able to make throughout the years. And it hasn't really turned into a benefit. You use that addition by subtraction, it ain't the case in this situation. You know, they had lost some valuable players, some key pieces to this dynasty in a potential dynasty, I would say. And now they don't look like a potential dynasty anymore because of the moves they continually made to cut so, so they can avoid the apron and the tax, which makes sense because you shouldn't have to, you know, have all these players making that much money when they already make it rich, when they own the Nuggets or before they get to the Nuggets. And this team, they took a lot of money for their starting five. And <laughs> their starting five is basically what they're going to rely on a lot like they did today. And even though it did result in the victory, they look how much they had to get out of them just to be able to win this game. And this is what they have to do every night, unfortunately. Comment, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell for more analysis. And if you're new to the channel, I do breakdowns and breakdowns on the current players, legends, and rookies. And I also do other NBA content. So you love basketball content. You can't get enough. This is the channel for you. Also, if you've been on the channel, check out my older videos too. Because there might be some videos you have missed. This is just a reminder of that. You can find a lot of different content that you might want to see. You probably forgot because you was busy. I hear you. I understand you. I'm just letting you know there's some videos that you might miss. Other than that, thanks for commenting. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for keeping this channel one of the most popular channels in the game and on YouTube. And I appreciate that. 
and I'll be back with more content later today.